with this third lecture we continue our study of polymer solutions so now flory said okay there are two very interesting thing there <coughs> one is um, if the polymer in a good solvent if the polymers monomer of the polymers don't like each other then we have a effect repulsion between them however it cannot go on swelling because when you increase remember the distribution is e to the power minus r square where the r square comes because all the many configurations and what is the configuration degree of freedom tells you it tells you of the entropy now you can see e to the power minus r square has a maximum you have r equal to zero but this is remember this is an average because many different orientations that's why r zero comes but however you, you also tells you, you cannot stretch it too far this is called elasticity of the polymer so polymer uses a <coughs> lot of it loses a lot of entropy if you stretch it so there is these two forces acting opposite to each other one is that repulsion energy which tries to push it out but elasticity of the polymer which wants to keep it at certain size this is what flory realized and is a beautiful calculation okay say okay internal concentration of the uh, n by rt as we discussed already then i can consider a repulsion energy with this uh, <coughs> equation that a repulsive is half kbt nu dc square so this new t is the effective parameter and as i said this is essentially nothing but van der waals theory that we are doing and so see now here the important thing to know two terms new t and uh let us know vt not uh not new it's v vt which is a temperature dependent excluded volume parameter which is like very much like the a parameter in van der waals theory uh, uh, that is it's a volume parameter but it essentially takes care of the interaction energy now and so c is the concentration is number within a volume so volume is r to the power d number is there so this is repulsion energy <coughs> and flory introduced this parameter 1 minus 2x b to the power d and we will we'll, we'll learn a lot about it later but it's just to show that it can go either from plus to minus and then integration of the volume element if i integrate what this volume element of this the, of this this c to n to the power rd and then i get this quantity uh volume element then i'll get the total repulsion energy is n square because there is a uh, uh, coming with a n here rd and then i take all the all the all the monomers then i get n square so integration of volume element essentially meaning taking all this so the important thing is that repulsion energy scales as n square by rd now if i take the elastic term which again is coming now it is nothing but what is in the exponent of gaussian distribution so r square by n d square that's what i had in the gaussian distribution so since e to the power uh, Boltzmann distribution gives me a value of a quantity x e to the power minus x by kbt so i just uh, rearrange terms i get the elastic terms trivially a kbt r squared by n b squared thus i have the repulsive term of n number of monomers connected in a polymer in a chain is in r squared n squared by r d kbt v and v is the van der waals uh, essentially van der waals a and then and it plays a very similar load uh, of a and comes out in a very similar way that uh, we have already done mayer's theory when you do that then we see we add the two free energy repulsion and uh, repulsion and uh, the elastic term which is an effective attraction which is uh, kind of putting it closer together when i add them i get these things sorry but, uh, it's a little bit uh, but we will, we, will, we will give you the right. It screwed up equation by V by N square by RD. That is where 
just two terms are added. Now, the important thing is that I minimize F with respect to R. And if I minimize R with respect to R, then I get a beautiful result. This is because when I do F dr equal to zero, then uh, there is a r to the power, r to the power d plus one, it becomes, and the terms become r. So d plus one and r, but they are in opposite side. One is numerator and is denominator. So you know, when I rearrange the terms, then I get there is a negative terms from <coughs> squared by r d and positive terms are squared by. So they work out right. So you get then r to the power d plus two scales as the n cube and then you get the beautiful result rf is for flurry that n to the power new the radius of flurry is the new is called flurry parameter c by d plus two that means so when i get uh, d equal to three it becomes three by five very important result d equal to three i get three by five so suddenly you see in the ideal polymer chain this end to end distance scales as n to the power half square root in half new is half however in when you take attraction and repulsions all these things into account and in a good polymer solver uh, then you get this uh, huge difference that means n to the power half because n to the power three by five in uh, but when you go to d equal to four Another surprise and interesting result, d equal to four, it is three by six, not a half. So in four dimension, that plays very important. Though theoretically, not much relevance in the real world, but you get this ideal chain behavior, partly because when you have four dimension, then the concentration of polymer, then is so much more volume around each polymer, then these repulsive interactions and all these things are not that important. That's why you get back the ideal polymer chain. But three dimension and two dimension things are very different. Now it is, we have discussed this before, so, but I do I like to emphasize it. RF is n to the power new for ideal chain is half, but it is not so in uh, A. So in the real chain, it is very, very different. Thermodynamics of polymer solution, we already did quite a bit because at the end of the day, it's the same thing that we will be uh, um, having this take care of these two forces. One is the interaction with the solvent, monomer solvent interaction. That's one term, which is, as I already said, for the parameter chi that will come here and will be a little bit more quantified here. And then we'll do the uh, mixing of polymer uh, in a solvent. So, solvent has to come in. So, in addition to the entropy that we talked about and polymer interaction that at all, you will have one more entropy that entropy. <coughs> this is a mixing entropy between the solvent and the polymer. So, basically, the entropic term here uh, is essentially the uh, arrangement of polymer chains that exist. So, what one considers in Flory Hung is theory, very famous theory, that one considers that you have a lattice, and <coughs> the lattice theory was usual in polymer because polymer is so big, much bigger than solvent, that one can consider, as I told you, as a random walk. And that since uh, the, the uh, uh, size of the monomer is not important, one can uh, uh, as well uh, take the advantage of the lattice. So now we have to calculate that how many ways or make an estimate how many ways I can put monomer, uh, the polymers, monomers of the polymer and the solvent molecules on a lattice. And that will give an entropic term. And there's an enthalpic term because of interactions between solvent molecules and solvent and polymer and polymer and monomer and monomer. So enthalpy we have three terms. <coughs> and we now we already considered the effective interaction of these kind of uh, good solvent but poor solvent. Uh, here is the same thing and what we are doing. It's very similar, but we are doing a little bit more justification of the polymer or polymer solvent interaction. That is a little bit done better than and quantify that. That's why otherwise nothing different from the what we did earlier or same minimization of free energy and everything will come. 
So when we do that, we said, how many ways I can put a polymer, then you can see the first term and the second term on the right hand side. This is the free energy of mixing. And free energy of mixing as the entropy term. That means how many ways I can place a polymer n of size n, polymer size n, let's say n p, n is the total number of sides. And then, uh, and calculate that is entropy of mixing because I am mixing the solvent molecules and the polymer. And I'm laying down the polymer in the lattice. And how many ways I can do that? Essentially, same as binary mixture, entropy of mixing. When you do entropy of mixing in your thermodynamics in binary mixture, what do you do? You do n factorial divided by n a factorial, n b factorial. And then that is gives you the omega, the total number of ways. And then you take log of that to get the entropy by using Boltzmann formula. And that gives you uh, x1 ln x1 plus x2 ln x2. You can also write x1 ln x1 plus 1 minus x1 ln 1 minus x1 because x1 are x2 are whole fractions. <coughs> Together they become one. It's a very similar thing here in, in, in uh, polymer. Here, however, one has to take care of the fact that you have a polymer is a, a monomer. So the first term, polymer consists of many monomers. The first term takes care of that fact. The second part is just the solvent part. And phi is the volume fraction. The, the size of the, the, through phi enters the size of the, uh, of the polymer. Now the important thing, the chi, I said is the pluriparameter chi. That has exactly the same thing we have in binary mixtures. And we did the binary mixtures, or you are not, you look in my book, binary mixture has been done <coughs> in great detail. And that is the, if I A and B, then A interaction and A B interaction and B B interaction. When A and B like each other, then these parameters, that means monomer and uh, of the polymer and the solvent, they like each other. Then the chi term that you see on the first term on the right hand side will be negative and chi will become negative. On the other hand, if A and B here monomer of the polymer and the solvent, they don't like each other. Then and A and A and B, they like each other. Then A like each other, B B like each other, then this term is, is become because then chi and chi are negative, then the chi becomes positive. So a good solvent chi is negative and the bad solvent chi is positive. So through this uh, parameter, we essentially what Flory did, he used the ideas of entropy of mixing and the entropy of mixing and the binary mixture theory, the ideality, uh, non-ideality parameter that we know in the breakdown of Raoult's law. So the idea of this classical physical chemistry is combined with statistical mechanics or statistical concepts to develop this statistical thermodynamic theory of polymer solution in a very elegant and very simple way which has stood the test of time. Um, so this again the same thing this is side because I divide the total number of sides and then you get the uh, entropy of the solvent as I said and entropy of the things I'm not going through the derivations You'll find the derivations in many places, including my book and also in Wikipedia. <coughs> you know, there's a good theory of Fourier Huggins. So now I want to calculate the so I have calculated the entropy. This is the entropy of laying down a polymer into a lattice side, polymer of volume fraction phi in a uh, lattice of insides. That's why the first n in the denominator comes. <coughs> now one 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 interaction. As we just discussed, this is the van der Waals sum. This KBT, I put KB equal to one KBT by the pluriparameter chi for monomer monomer phi square. The monomer solvent, because monomer and solvent, it is phi into one minus phi because one minus phi is for solvent, and solvent solvent is one minus phi square. There are three terms. 
what i do now i next add all these terms together and i keep okay <coughs> i keep in the term which is linear uh, so i find out in that sense there is the maximum contribution comes from the uh, the one that i need is the monomer solvent interaction is phi into 1 minus phi so this becomes the important term the first term becomes the important term in, in for me in this in this understanding the thermodynamics of polymer because solvent uh, solvent polymer interaction is chi phi into 1 minus phi chi gives the uh, relative interaction and phi into 1 minus phi gives in the probability that a monomer is interacting with the solvent molecule then I add this, all these things together, and then I again minimize. And when I minimize the <coughs> this free energy, then I get the theory, theory of the uh, polymer solution. And that theory, uh, when I do with the value of chi, it is essentially Van der Waals theory. And that then explains this good solvent and bad solvent collapse in terms of these uh, these things so the <coughs> the chi in, in the so good solvent chi is negative but when it crosses over to poor solvent then chi is positive and uh, this is exactly the thing that you get the free energy and then you find out what is the side and you find there's a crossover in the size from uh, depending on the value of chi okay this is the essentially this free energy embodies the thermodynamics of uh, polymer solution and Flory against theory. More details are worked out in my book. I'm sorry we don't have, but we'll try to put a slide there on these things. The slide is, next slide is missing, so I won't be able to go to that, but instead, <coughs> I'm going to give something which is the Flory Stockmere theory. This is the theory that. Uh, you know, we know experimentally when we are doing a, uh, a transition, we are doing a, uh, we find a transition. That means when I uh, add many important things, we need the gel, many of the applications of material. So what do we do? We go on adding the concentration in uh, these monomers. And then we sometimes add some things, gel them together. But what happened when the monomer concentration goes beyond certain thing, uh, concentration or temperature is lowered, then we find there's a dramatic transition, a phase transition that takes place from salt to gel. And that is uh, called the salt gel transition is a very well known phenomena, which is essentially very close to what we do in, uh, uh, is very close to what we do in, uh, in Mayer's theory. So salt gel transition is very similar to gas liquid transition. And the reason of my including in this, uh, in this uh, uh, course and also in the book is that to show you how Mayer's theory is used. Mayer's theory of 1937 and Flory did almost at the same time and Stockman did later in 1941. <clears throat> the same theory. Stockman was a student of, uh, of uh, Joseph Mayer. Uh, so basic idea that, uh, <coughs> that instead of Mayer's clusters, we have the real polymer clusters. And you remember the uh, Mayer's theory, two guys come close to each other and we have a Mayer a function. Here we have the Mayer a function is replaced by something called functionality f. And um, the polymers like nylon, they never form, they are thread-like, they never form a gel, but they become, can very, become very long. And it is important that they don't form a gel uh, for all our, uh, Textiles, but in many other cases like rubber, we want them to form a gel. <coughs> and that is when functionality has to be greater than two. So I briefly tell you now 
the salt, method of salt hill transition. Uh, and uh, there is a basic idea then is that I have a solution phase where viscosity is low and monomers are uh, kind of uh, dispersed. And then they undergo a polymerization and they uh, form a giant molecule and they precipitate out. The reason it is important to understand it because the solid transition, if we can control, we can control the property <coughs> of the gel. And so this exactly it follows like Mayer's theory, a system in identical monomers and carrying identical functional groups. Uh, so one monomers react with each other to form a polymer and the functionality is F. It's chosen very similar to Mayer's F function, also functionality F. Now we have to say that after that, some stage of the polymerization, we have uh, Mn gives the number of monomers of size n, and then sum of Mn, the last equation in the bottom, is the total number of polymers, and Nmn is the total number of monomers, is exactly what we did in Mayer's theory. The Nmn, the Mn is the number of n clusters of Mayer, Nmn is the total number of molecules or atoms the system name and, and the name is there also the capital M was the size of the <coughs> polymer. Okay, so the total number of ways now we do exactly what Mayer did. So we can remember what we did the Mayer's partition function when here that is the number of ways <coughs> I can form monomers timer. And so this is our essentially our partition omega is partition function q uh, and in this whole gel transition we, we do not we the interaction is already taken into account by forming one 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 bond as i told you that is essentially a function so we uh, all we need to find out how many ways i can form these things and then that is that Exactly, Mayer's theory omega n to the power omega n by n factorial. Omega n is what you would call Bn or Mayer's cluster integrals. So it is exactly Mayer's partition function. And then we need to know what is the Mayer Bl. Remember, in Mayer's theory, we did omega n or Bl in terms of the irreducible cluster integrals beta n. So that is now done. In this case, the omega n is evaluated and can evaluate it directly, and that is I'll give it here. <coughs> the story goes in the following in Mayer's theory. I told you the relation between cluster integrals, the Mayer did the expression of the Mayer cluster integral q in terms of reducible cluster integral Bl. But the derivation of BL in terms of beta k was highly non trivial, and that was done by his wife, Joseph, and the Maria Gopat Mayer, who got the Nobel Prize later in nuclear shell theory, and who was, didn't have a job because those days women, uh, it was very difficult for women to get a job. So, and uh, she was, she came from America, and then was in Columbia for some time, they moved to Chicago, even in Chicago she was not given a job in the beginning. But it was the Maria Gopat Mayer who helped Stock Mayer, which is in Stock Mayer's 1941 paper, uh, that, is, that is acknowledged, that, uh, but she didn't want to become a co-author of the paper. So Omega and neither was she co-author of the Mayer's paper. So those days the women many times did not get the due credit the desert that is something which uh, mm, uh, one of our famous scientists, Dan Frank, had repeatedly brings out these days that many of the things in the old days were done actually by women and that were not <coughs> given much credit, but whatever. So, this is the expression in terms of uh, the F and N and uh, when you do that, 
put this mm, do uh, that should be f n in a mistake f n f n minus one factorial. So there are uh, two factorial actually one factorial sign is missing. But when you do that now, you have to do exactly like in may ask you, you know, I now maximize the omega. That's this thing, you know, it's statistical mechanics. It's same as minimization of free energy. Maximization of omega is same as maximization of entropy. And that is same as minimization of free energy. And when you do that, I get a beautiful relation, which is in terms of the most probable distribution, which is actually parallel to the one Mayer's ML Mayer's theory. That has now that where there comes a fugacity in uh, Mayer's theory. Yeah, that quantity is by zeta. And beauty of that, I can now evaluate E and zeta. And the A is the following expression what you have if n1 minus alpha square by alpha and alpha is the extent of reaction very common in chemistry that means how many the <coughs> number of functional groups act so if i don't have ring that's why absence of ring polymer uh, cyclization comes in at, uh, as an hypothesis so then alpha is you can easily convince yourself this is the fraction of uh, because each each reaction consumes two functional groups. That's why you see the factor of F. Total number of functional groups is Fn. So extent of reaction, 2n minus m by Fn, that is the extent of reaction. And when I do the minimization with Lagrangian multiplier, then I get the F in 1 minus alpha square by alpha. So it so one does exactly Mayer's theory. One does the uh, uh, Lagrangian multiplier, parallel all these things. Then now I got the even or even star. Now I can do uh, some uh, signs. What we measure in experiment, like in viscosity, is the weight average molecular weight. That viscosity diverges. So I now do <coughs> first. I define. Okay, I know even. <laughs> so I do what is the weight fraction of an n model, which is exactly like ML, L, ML, L, ML in Mayer's um, theory. What is the weight of the gigantic cluster that is going to appear? Here, what is the weight of n model? That is mn by n. And then I put this uh, mn expression here, last equation, and I use the a here, and then I get. <clears throat> I just made a small transformation of variable zeta to the power n. There's f to the power n comes that becomes x to the power n on the extreme right of my right hand side equation. And fn minus n factorial, as I said, there's a delay there. Uh, so that is wn. Okay. <clears throat> so I go by, I want to correct a little bit. This is f to the power n. The n that is subscript here should be superscript, is a power. Okay. Then I get this equation. Then now, weight average molecular weight, if this is the omega Wn is a distribution. So I in order to get the normalized distribution, I have to multiply it by n and sum over Wn over all n. Multiply by Wn sum over all n. When I do that, this sum can be done. And this is one of the another two the force and a beautiful result of statistical mechanics that I get this beautiful expression of weight average molecular weight, which is observed by light scattering, observed by in viscosity and all other experiments. <laughs> now look at this beauty equation. There's something very nice about this equation and some unusual. When alpha into a minus one equal to one, I repeat, when in the denominator on the right hand side, extent of reaction increases such that alpha into a minus one become one then the denominator diverges. So when the extent of reaction becomes one over F minus one, then F minus one alpha equal to one. So that extent of reaction, when polymonomers react to that extent, increase as it is going on reacting, it 
reaches uh, 1 over f minus 1, that value, then it diverges. And that is exactly what is shown here that <coughs> that the weight of its molecular weight is undergoing a divergence. So, plot of a system of uh, tri-functional unit where this becomes this extent it diverges and extent of reaction in tri-functional unit f is equal to three. So, three minus one is two. So, two into alpha. When alpha become half, then for a tri-functional unit, this diverges. <coughs> this is where you find this divergence into the um, uh, things. It is exactly like similar to density um, um, theory. Now, uh, so summary of this. So this is essentially the same as a, a appear in some liquid phase. And this is one of the beautiful theory where uh, Flory used it first, then the Stockmayer did it. And as so, we need to I just briefly summarize you polymer that we done. Uh, we have done the end to end distribution and polymer size. Then we have done theory of polymer solution, <coughs> which has been remarkably successful. Uh, and it can explain polymer swelling, it can explain polymer collapse. It can say this crossover from swelling to collapse at the theta temperature. And Flory Stockmayer theory of sol gel transition, essentially the application of from Mayer's theory to polymerization. And Stockmayer was a student of uh, Mayer, but also worked with uh, Flory. And he, but Flory already did that, sol gel transition. Flory did that before. But stock may are used to make it more uh, rational by using the Mayer's theory. And that is that's very nice. And as I told you, Flory was given uh, a Nobel Prize, single Nobel Prize in 1974. People say Falkenstein should have, uh, should have, uh, <coughs> Share it, but uh, but given the Flory's contribution so gigantic, because he not only did the theory of polymer uh, size distribution, the theory of non-ideal polymer that is into the one new nuclear three by five, he did the theory of polymer solution, which is Flory Huggins, then he did the sol gel transition that is also Flory theory. So. That it probably was justified to give Flory the single Nobel Prize. To summarize, I want to tell you that this, this theory is essentially almost like the uh, one that we did in the course is essentially is a celebration of Flory, Paul Flory, uh, who, as I told you in the beginning, was a remarkable human being, uh, who not only just did this wonderful work, he did work in many other areas biology and many, many places, uh, the Flory theory, Flory is, that's why it's also very important and respected name in biology. And uh, he's a humanitarian who did a lot of work for scientists in underdeveloped condition, countries and under difficult conditions. So look up the Flory's theory of body mind. <coughs> look up the Jan's book. Scaling concepts in polymer physics, which is takes many of the flowing concepts to a much higher level. And uh, uh, last, I say that one of the reasons probably Flory was given in 1974 Nobel Prize, though many of his work were done before 1940s and 1950s. The reason was that in 19, early 70s, just after critical phenomena theory was developed by uh, Kenneth Wilson. Uh, we know Michael Fisher and all these people, and uh, that is the time. Uh, 1972, Dijan did a wonderful calculation of polymer excluded volume. He mapped it into a magnetic problem, and he could essentially do 
renovation group calculation of the polymer problem. <coughs> the Michael Fisher extended that and they discovered the, all the fluid equations, all of them. They discovered that yes, it means square size scales as n to the power mu and mu is 3 by 5 for 3 dimension and half for 4 dimension. Then they discovered the theta solvent, polymer collapse. So whole of flurry theory was developed and derived by using much sophisticated methods of polymer physics um, by Dijan, Dijan uh, Michael Fisher and some other people in France, in Germany. And that probably, the, then the realization that this, what Flory did goes far beyond just the polymer. It is a beautiful theory of statistical mechanics, a contribution to statistical mechanics, multiple contribution to statistical mechanics of interacting system. Okay, I uh, stop here today. This is the last uh, lecture on polymer, and I strongly recommend you to read our book, my book, and the other two books also. Okay, I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for your attention. Bye.